Viewers, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna get right into it. Finally gonna put some paint on the Datsun. I'm gonna spray the rockers, the fenders, and maybe even the valence, the new one. So let's get to it. All right, I think I'm gonna start with these fenders because they're quick release. This is the driver side fender. Uh, I've already done a little bit of wet sanding on this and I found some really cool paint underneath this. Uh, fortunately, and Ryan Hicks in Ohio did tell me about this, these fenders have had the marker lights deleted and someone did this in a really not great way. Uh, they welded or tack welded in a piece of steel and then likely bondoed in uh, to make this smooth. I don't think I'm gonna fix that now. Uh, if I ever want to in the future, I can cut this plate out and put the marker lights back in that way. Uh, I think I'm gonna knock this down and there is one pretty decent dent in the driver's side fender. Sorry, pass there's one pretty decent dent in the passenger side fender. I may try to dolly that, hammer that just a little bit. So let me get this done. So right here, right at the front, there's a pretty decent dinger right here in this fender. So I'm gonna try to see if I can hammer that out, dolly it just a little bit, make it look a little better. Otherwise, there's enough dents in the rest of this car that this will fit right in. Let's see if we can get a hammer in here. Well, I think for my purposes, I'm going to just consider that better than it was. This wrinkle that's right up here by the by the, uh, the bend to the body line, that's gonna be really hard for me to take out. I don't really know how to anyway. So we're gonna call this good enough. I think there's a decent chunk of Bondo in here already anyway. So we're gonna rough this up and get it ready. So not going as well as I wanted it to. I'm gonna come back and hit this with 400 by hand. So I'm just hitting this with the trusty sanding block or a piece of wood. Some of this stuff I'm gonna have to come back and hit in by hand. Anything around these curves and stuff, I'll probably have to do that by hand, but I'm trying to avoid the body lines. I don't wanna sand too far on there. Just looking to stuff up the primer so that I can put some more primer on. Hopefully try and smooth it out a little bit. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna hit this with filler primer just to try to fill in, I don't know, a few of the imperfections. We don't wanna hide everything. But then if you look at the rest of the car, the hood, there's like a dark blue primer underneath, but all the rest of the car underneath the green is like a dark brown rust colored primer. So what I think I'm gonna do is give this one coat of the filler primer just to kind of smooth this out a little bit. And then I'm gonna sprinkle in this rust coat primer, the rust colored primer in a couple spots. And then once it's dry, I'll sand through it and we'll see what it looks like. I'm gonna hit this fender a couple spots with this uh, Rust-Oleum rust reformer. Who knows if it actually works, but it definitely makes me feel like I did something about it. I think this stuff works pretty good. The previous owner of this car did sprayed some of this under the hood uh, on one of the fenders, and it really helped it at least stop the rust from getting any worse. Uh, it dries pretty fast, and you can scuff it and shoot right over it. So the engine bay of this car, the whole engine bay that you guys saw me paint in two episodes ago, uh, I laid a coat of this rust reformer on the whole engine bay first and then I laid the DE1635 over that. I'm gonna let those couple spots dry up on that. Hit the driver's side with filler primer. Passenger side has been resprayed with filler primer. Again, that's just to kinda get it a little bit smoother. It still has the dents. So once that's dry over there, I'm gonna shoot that one too. And then I'm gonna start laying in the brown primer. Okay, so my plan for this is really, really complicated and it's gonna take a long time to explain. So sit down, I'm kidding. I do not have a plan for this. I've only seen this done. And honestly, this is the cheap and easy way out of actually doing any real body work and ever getting a car painted. Patina is in, but 
At this point, I'm using it as an excuse or a crutch so that I don't have to paint this car right now. So, this red primer or brown primer, I have no idea what to do with it. We're just gonna try it. Oh, look at that. This can's old. Uh, the nozzle must be clogged. Stand by. Take two. Let's see. Again, no rhyme or reason to this. The only thing I can think of is if a car is out in the sun for a long time, I would think right at the body lines, that would be where the sun would break down the paint the soonest, or at least that's what I have seen, maybe, I don't know. If you have a better way of doing this, feel free to comment down below. Uh, this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm glad I'm doing this as a rough paint job because this paint is old and crappy. I think the next thing I'm gonna do is take this grill off and this little under grill trim piece. As you can see, this thing is hammered uh, as well as the lower valence. So I think I'm gonna try to get this all off of here because I do have another lower valence panel. So it looks like the upper two bolts have already been removed. I think there's two more, one here, one over there. They look very rusty. I doubt they're gonna come out. Yeah, and they're also stripped. Like not even a bolt left to turn. All right, I think you guys know what the next step is. I think it's almost broken. May need a little bit of convincing with the pliers or something. Luckily, the support bracket for the grill and the trim piece here, luckily that is still good. It's just this whole grill that's actually rusted and broken. Very nearly popped. I think there's like a couple of rivets left holding it to the bracket here. And then you have to address the rust belt. There it is. That grill doesn't look that bad. <laughs> if somebody needed this, I am gonna keep the Datsun logo, <clears throat> but it looks like the, the grill itself is in okay shape, but I think you can get these reproduction and they're not too expensive. Of course, the super rusty flathead screw right in the middle breaks free with no effort at all. There we go. Well, it looks like this uh, lower valence is gonna be a little bit more of a fight than I thought. It looks like it is, it's held in place with bolts and spot welds. So looks like I'll be drilling some spot welds out here and trying to get this thing separated, to get it off the car. kind of a heap and this one as you can see is rusted dented and pretty much done for so the only thing I think I might save off of this is this lower lip maybe I can reuse this it's just plastic otherwise I'm sure I could find another one all right so you may have noticed that getting that valence out of the way has exposed a little bit more damage here so you can see this is folded up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be flat like this. So half of this lower core support I think is junk. And that's being generous. I think most of it is junk. I also noticed, and I didn't show this in the last video, right under here, uh, passenger side, when I was wire wheeling the engine bay to paint everything, I found some more rust here. And there's a little bit of pitting back a little bit further on the rail, but I think that's all going to be okay. I have to cut this whole section out probably back to about here. So I'll just make a piece out of, I don't know, probably 18 gauge. 
I'll cut this off here and then run it all the way over here and then just do a seam weld here. But this whole lower core support, as you can see, is rusted as well. So I have heard that when you put an intercooler on these cars, sometimes you have to modify this lower cross member anyway. This is kind of a critical structure point of the car. The frame rails all look good. It's just this thing got smushed underneath here. Anyway, so I'm not gonna focus on the rust repair right now. I'm gonna get back on stripping the paint off of this much nicer valence. Uh, it's much nicer, but there's still some decent dents. And keeping in theme with the rest of the car, there is, I don't know, I'd call that a 16th of an inch or more of Bondo on this thing. So not even close to being nicer than the rest of the car, but it's better than that piece of junk. So I'm gonna strip this down and we'll pick up after that. All right, so off camera, I stripped most of the paint off of the replacement valence. And as you can maybe see, the entire shop is covered in a layer of dust. That's because at one, in one place, there was like a quarter inch, so like three eighths inch thick of Bondo. So this valence does have its fair share of dents but I got most of the Bondo out of it. So I think I'm gonna do a little bit of hammer and dolly work. Here's a pretty decent dent. Probably can't see that because it's all shiny now, but I'll have to ask Steve 2.0 what exactly these wheels are, but this thing hogs. It absolutely annihilates Bondo and paint, and it gives you this nice surface. Now I don't know how much damage it did to the surface if it caused me more problems than, you know, problem solved. I'm gonna work this just a little bit with the hammer and dolly and then shoot it with some primer and get it ready for paint tomorrow. All right, here's what I'm gonna call it for the night. Uh, this is the valence that I just stripped and I know it's in primer and primer hides everything. This thing does still have dents, but it is so much straighter than when I stripped it, it's ridiculous. Now there is still some crinkly garbly gook up there. I will need just a little bit Maybe a little bit of filler to smooth it out a little bit, but there was a huge dent right here. That's gone, or for the most part, it's gone. It's a heck of a lot better. Smooth that out with a hammer and dolly. Anyway, this valence is going to work. It's a lot better than the one that came off. So that's what I'm gonna call it for tonight. We'll have uh, color match paint tomorrow, and all the stuff you see in front of you should be green, along with the rockers. All right, back out here again. Next day, I've got the lower valence and the front fenders primed up, filler primer. I'm gonna knock these down. Had to do some last minute welding on the B pillars and the back of the A pillar just to fill in some gaps. Same thing on this side. So next thing I'm gonna do is block down uh, both sides on the rockers here, get this as smooth as I can and then get this masked off, get some filler primer shot on the rockers, and then blow the shop out and probably put a cover on the Oldsmobile just to minimize overspray, clean up around the shop or around the car, and then get ready to spray. All right, now for everybody's least favorite part, masking. Got the rocker shot with a quick coat of filler primer. And yeah, who cares about how this is masked off? We're just hitting the rockers on the car. So I'm gonna let this dry up. I'm gonna scuff it. And then I'm gonna set up to paint this stuff as well. Yeah, I think we'll pick back up when I'm ready to mix and spray. 
Okay, here's what I decided to go with for paint gun. It's a Greeny, Greeny from Harbor Freight. This is the $25 gun. Uh, I watched a video by Casey's Customs and he compared a lot of the Harbor Freight guns and this one for being 25 bucks is a little bit better than the purple guy, the nine or $10 one or whatever it is, $15. Anyway, got a little inline regulator here and a disposable filter. I also have a dryer on my air compressor. Uh, it's not super nice. Anyway, I have some basic single stage urethane paint that was made uh, by a local paint shop to me. So I actually brought them the fender and they custom matched this for me. So it is going to be as close as possible to that factory green, but I also have a code now that I can bring this back if I need more. Uh, so that's single stage. And then they gave me a wet look hardener. This is just to make sure because I am gonna do a patina paint job on this, uh, that when I spray it on there, the paint will harden up all the way so that if I do sand some of it off and have to spray more, it will not lift the paint underneath because of the hardener. All right, so I mixed up 18 ounces of paint, which is basically a full cup on this gun. I'm gonna use the masked off area of the hood to try to get my pattern right. Let me start by saying you should not take any painting advice from me. I do not know how to paint. I'm literally trying this for the first time with one of these guns just to see if I can make this work. So I'm gonna set my mixture over here and then I'm gonna try, maybe I'll start with the rockers. So after one decent coat, I mean, yeah, obviously this is gloss. Sorry about the, the fan noise. I got that fan going just to pull the fumes out of here. But after one coat, now this is gonna look way better on camera than it does in person. There are two runs. Right here, you can see I put a little bit of extra paint on the fender because I had just a tiny bit left in the cup. But there's the fenders. And here's the valence. Now, I know this thing is dented up and crunched up over here, but for this car, it won't matter considering most of that's probably gonna get sanded off or part of it anyway. So I'm gonna let this stuff dry the guy at the paint shop told me in a few hours I'd be able to sand it. There's the driver's side rocker. And I will say, the guy at the paint shop, man, he nailed this color. This is right on. So I'm going to let this stuff dry and then I'll pick back up when I'm ready to wet sand it to match. All right, it's a few hours later. We're going to uh, unmask this whole thing and we're going to get everything put back on. So wife's going to come out here and help me put the doors on. We're going to put the fenders on and the hood on and try to wrap this video up. I don't want to do any of the wet sanding until everything's on the car so that I know how far to go with it. But looks like the paint's hardening up pretty good. So that's what we're going to get to. All right, viewers off camera, pulled off all the masking stuff, all the tape and everything and Got the fenders and the doors and stuff and everything back on. So 
without any further ado, here is what the first mock-up looks like. Now this is before I've done any wet sanding, so obviously the newly painted parts look really bright, but I will adjust that. But look at this. The Dot Mikado looks like a car again. My wife came out here and helped me put the doors on, and I have the fenders and the hood and the front valence just mocked up for now. I do have a new grill. I haven't put that on yet. The front fenders may look really, really, really bright. It's because they were just sprayed, but also the existing paint on here is number one, it's incredibly dirty, and number two, it's yellowed because it had some linseed oil put on it. So I think once we roll this car outside, we can power wash it, and I think the colors will even out just a little bit, a little bit better, but if you look, at the rockers, they actually don't stick out that bad. All right, so after a few hours, let the paint cure for probably three, four hours after I got done spraying. Uh, we unmasked the whole car, put all the stuff back on, just mocked up the front valence and the fenders and put the doors on. So for the first time in months, this car actually looks like a car. I gotta get this edited to get it up tomorrow. Everybody that's subscribed, we hit 301 today. I'm so pumped about that. Uh, I cannot wait to keep working on this Datsun. Uh, I'm ordering engine parts now. I had somebody mention that maybe I should pull the KA down, do a quick rebuild on the thing. So that's gonna be in one of the upcoming videos. Cylinder head's still on the bench, gotta fix that. That's part of that next one. Thank you all so, so much. I'm having a ton of fun with this. Look forward to a bunch more Dotson content, maybe even a little bit on the Oldsmobile. And then of course, that Hornet's gonna be back in the shop. But we also have a couple other projects coming up in the future. One of them that's on like a late 60s, early 70s Mopar. So that's where I'm gonna wrap it this week. We'll see you in the next one.